Well, you guys got another video here for you on what to do after a clean install of Windows 10. Now, these are just some of the basic steps that you can take after you install Windows 10. And we're going to be going through a bunch of these. OK, it will take a bit of time. Uh, but if you want a more in-depth, advanced video, then let me know in the comments section below. And I'll make that video for you and add in some advanced stuff like uh, group policy and stuff like that. So let's get started anyway. Uh, I'm get feeling a bit better. Still a bit uh, ropey. Uh, voice is a bit crackly, but you'll just have to put up with that. So first off, let's go to the device manager here. Now, when you first install Windows 10, Windows 10 is pretty good at uh, installing drivers. And uh, this is one of the better features for Windows 10. But you can see here, you may still have something looking like this, where you've got uh, drivers that need to be installed. And uh, if that is the case, then you're going to need to get those drivers. Now, where can you get those drivers from? Well, you can either get them from the driver CD that come with your motherboard, or if it was a pre-built computer that you bought from, say, Best Buy or PC World, then it will probably have a CD in there with all the drivers on it anyway. But you can go to the internet and uh, download them from the motherboard manufacturer's website, okay? And I'll show you how to do that right now. Now I'm going to stick up a bunch of sites here which are related to uh, pretty much all the computers that you can buy as you can see here Intel uh, chipset drivers and uh, device software you can download this and uh, run this and it will install on your system you're also going to need your graphics drivers so whether you're running an Nvidia you will want to get the Nvidia driver now I never let Windows uh, choose to download the driver for me I prefer to use uh, my own personal driver which I've downloaded from the manufacturer's website which would have been Nvidia or AMD you could just select your graphics card here uh, what version you've got and then download and install that driver that will fix uh, your graphics card uh, driver issues if you've got a missing driver or most of the time Windows 10 will automatically put uh, a driver on your system but it doesn't always put the latest and greatest and sometimes it can be even put a, an older generation on there as well so I like to go to the manufacturers website and download it once you've done that you can choose your operating system and click search now if you're running an AMD uh, setup you can select an AMD graphics card here and download the correct driver for your AMD card and it's that simple so you just select it on the list here click submit and it will give you the driver to download and that's what I would do when I do a first install of any sort of system really. So those are the AMD and Nvidia and Intel chipsets. Now you also got the motherboard drivers now if you've got any motherboard drivers that are missing like chipset drivers or anything like that then you will need to go to the motherboard manufacturers website and I'll show you a bunch of those and show you uh, what they look like and how to download them. Now it's always best to get it from the motherboard uh, manufacturer's website or the maker of the graphics cards website because obviously that is the latest and greatest driver and uh, if you bought a motherboard with a CD inside there normally these have been manufacturers a long time ago and the drivers are normally out of date anyway. So you're going to need to update your motherboard drivers and uh, you can go to the manufacturer's website of your make of uh, motherboard in this case this one's MSI and you can see here you can update your BIOS, uh, your drivers, your chipset drivers, USB drivers, sound drivers, just about any type of driver for that motherboard can be downloaded and updated uh, via this method here. You can choose your operating system and it will give you access to all the drivers to the make and model of that motherboard, whether it be MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, ASRock and so on. And now obviously these are the latest and greatest updates uh, from the motherboard manufacturer and uh, you can download these and install them now again as well what you can do is use their utility they do have utilities here which allow you to do an update uh, on the desktop here and it will just check their servers and update all the drivers on that motherboard as and when you need them so it's very easy to update your motherboard drivers via this method if you're not running a, a MSI motherboard, then you would need to obviously go to the websites of, say, Asus, ASRock, um, Gigabyte, all the other makers of motherboards. You can go there and download them drivers exactly the same as you would uh, MSI. 
and you would download them and you can use their utilities which they've designed as well to update now obviously if you don't want know what the make a motherboard number is or name you can get the uh, user manual or user guide which come with your motherboard it will tell you that make a model number it's also uh, printed on the motherboard itself you can see there it gives you the make a model number on there and you do a search for that and it will tell you exactly what make a model number of motherboard you've got in your computer you can also use software and uh, this will give you the make a motherboard uh, model number and name uh, if you've got software you can download any type of software off the internet and it will tell you that uh, right there as you can see it listed here and this will give you the information you need to download the right type of drivers and it's that simple really let's move on to the next step now the next thing uh, that I want to do here is make sure that I've got all the latest updates for uh, Windows 10 so I'm going to go to the Windows update tab I'm going to the settings here and go update and uh, security here and just do a full update of the system and this is going to make sure that we've got all the latest updates uh, for this version of Windows 10. Now I can understand some of you may not want to uh, update Windows 10 but it's important that you update Windows 10 after you've done a fresh install uh, and that way we've got all the latest updates and then we can put our programs on and everything else and then make an image of that system so we'll do that we'll go ahead and update here and let that install you may have to reboot the system a few times now you can change also the way you receive updates here and you can do more advanced stuff in group policy and stuff which i'll cover in another video if you want to see that but basically you can make a few different changes the way the delivery of your updates is done via the settings pane inside here now there's quite a few tweaks that you need to go through to set it up how you want um, I'm just going to go through and do a few of them here to just show you I don't like this people thing so I'm going to remove this and untick this uh, from here and uh, if you want to use it you can do but I don't like to use it I'm going to go into settings and uh, go back in here and uh, once we're inside here we can uh, go into uh, personalization and uh, I'm going to go into themes here and down the bottom is where we can add in our desktop icons so if you want to add some desktop desktop icons to your uh, desktop here's where you do it they sort of buried this feature it was uh, much more easier to get access to but they sort of buried it a little bit in Windows 10 but if you still want to see these on there like networking and uh, this PC control panel and stuff like that on your desktop you can put them there rather than put in shortcuts and it would add those onto your desktop so once I've got that sorted out we've got that how we want it here what we can do here is remove the uh, edge now if you like using edge you can leave edge on there but I'm just going to remove it because I don't use it and uh, what I'm going to do is replace that with a browser of my choice which would be uh, Google Chrome but I'll do that in a second first create a new folder and I'm going to put this uh, folder uh, code here and this will give me access to loads of tools it's a bit like a god mode folder uh, where you can call it whatever you like I'm just leaving it blank but if you want to name it something you can do I'm just going to remove the control panel here so I don't have two of the same icons and what this will do is give me access to a bunch of stuff inside here which you access quite a lot so you can see here there's a bunch of stuff inside here that's quite useful to have on your desktop so there you can see a bunch of useful tools uh, inside here and shortcuts to places what you're going to use on a regular basis and uh, that's useful to have on the desktop there so next up we go to uh, explore here and this is another one that I like to uh, do here I'm just going to go into uh, view and change uh, the options here to show hidden files folders and drives and also hide unhide file, file extensions and stuff like that I don't know why they do that it's a pet eight of mine and they've been doing it for a long time and you'd have thought they'd have just removed the text, that tick so you can see the uh, extension of that file so just go into view and then inside here we're going to click on the options tab here and this will take us to folder options now inside here I'd like to change this quick access to this PC and uh, click apply and OK there and go to view and we can make some changes inside here and change the uh, 
files and folder options here. So you can see here, show files, hidden files, folders and drives. I'm going to put the tick in there and also remove the hide file extensions. Just those two and apply that and OK. And we should be good to go. And that just shows you whether it's an executable file, an ISO or whatever file it is. And why they don't leave that on as default, I don't know. So next up, what we can do here is change our browser. To do that, I'm going to use Nunite and uh, we're going to download all the programs we need f using uh, Nunite. Now, Nunite has been around for a long time and it's a great little tool to give you all the programs you use into one executable file and install them all in one fell swoop. So if you use a lot of common programs like these ones on here, like 7-Zip and uh, Google Chrome or Firefox or, or whatever it is that you're using, it's broken it down into categories here. Just put the ticks into whatever you like to use and uh, download the Nunite program and it will then install all of those programs in one go. Uh, which means you don't have to go and download loads of programs from uh, different sources. And this is a re reliable and trusted program. It's been out for a long time and it's a real big uh, time saver. So I'm just going to do a couple of them here just to show you. And then once I've got all the uh, ticks done here, uh, what you need to do is there's a little executable part down the bottom which you can click on and uh, it will allow you to install them all in one go here so you can see here download and run your custom installation and updater so we're going to click on this and download that file and then we can then go ahead and run it so let me just click on there and uh, the download will start and I'm just going to click run here but you can save it to your desktop if you want to I'm just going to run it and let it install and a little box will pop up and it will start to install those uh, one after the other and then you just reboot your system and uh, you should have all the latest programs that you've uh, got there all updated as you can see they're starting to install now so I can shut that web page down now it's just starting to install those little free programs just to give you an idea that's now completed and uh, installed and you'll see there's only three programs on there but if you add a bunch of these on there then it will put all these onto your desktop. Next up I'm going to change the uh, program for Edge. I don't want Edge on there. I want to make sure that that is set to Chrome, my default program. So we can go into apps here and change the default program from Edge to uh, Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser you choose to use. It's going to go inside here and uh, change it here now if you're using VLC and stuff like that you can change it in here also and make changes to whatever programs you use as your default multimedia programs and stuff like that but you can see we've got our Chrome browser selected as our default uh, program now and you can change your mail and stuff like that up there as well if that's what you want to do so next up we can remove the edge I don't need that on there I'm going to remove that. Now next what we can do here is go to send to and uh, we're going to put this onto the taskbar here just so it's added on there. So next up I want to do this little registry tweak here which is going to change the uh, picture viewer. Uh, so the one that's defaulted for Windows 10 I don't like. I like the old style picture viewer so I'm going to change that and uh, put that onto the system here. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, it's entirely up to you. But this is what I like to do because I prefer to open my pictures with that program because they're a lot more easier and better than the uh, clunky one they've got on Windows 10 right now. So if I go open with now, you'll see Photos is the, the default one that he wants to use. I don't like that one. I want to go More Apps and now because I've put that tweak in there we should see Windows Photo Viewer and click OK and we should now have it opened in the older style app which gives me plenty more options up here which I like to use and I prefer the look of that myself personally uh, but basically that's that one done so once I've done that what I can do now I can uh, 
put in my wallpaper folders in there if I wanted to, but I'll do that uh, later on. Everyone knows how to do that. So I'm going to go back into apps and remove all the apps that I don't use. And this will include all the pesky ones like Candy Crush and uh, stuff like that. And you can click on these and uninstall them from here. Or you can use CCleaner or you can use a PC Decrapifier. You can use the it built in uninstaller or you can use PowerShell. And I'll just quickly show you PowerShell as well. So you can see here. And there's a bunch of codes here which you can just use to uninstall these in one fell swoop or you can do them one at a time i've shown you how to do this in other videos but basically uh, if you want to do this you just have to put the codes in i'll leave the codes in the video description for you and uh, you can just remove whatever you want okay i like to just remove a few of these which i don't like and if you're not bothered about it then you want to leave them on there then leave them on there it's entirely up to you uh, but this is just my personal choice i like to remove all these i'm not going to bore you and go through the whole process of this but basically uh, just remove whatever you don't want from that location there so i'll just quickly do a couple of more of these here and remove these and uninstall them and of course if you use onedrive you can leave it on there if you wish but i'm just going to remove some of this stuff like microsoft news I uh, don't like all that stuff and uh, I won't bore you but I'll just go through here and just remove the rest of this stuff okay so let's move on to the next bit here now you can also disable Cortana and all that sort of stuff um, but I'm just going to do a restore here and create a restore point now system restore is not active uh, by default you have to activate it and uh, turn it on uh, but some people may not want to use it anymore but I still like to use it and have it there as a little bit of a safety net if I've uh, got a driver issue and I want to roll back it's quite nice for that sort of feature but it's entirely up to you whether you want it on there you can do whatever you like here how much percentage you got depending on your space and uh, just select a percentage apply that and okay and then you can now configure and cr uh, create uh, a system restore point just call this back up and then click on create and once that's complete you should have a little safety net there for um, a system restore point and uh, a, a lot of people still use system restore it's been a part of windows for a long time and maybe they're trying to move away from it they want to use file history and stuff like that but if you want to use that you can do whatever you want to use uh, you use but i'm just going to have that enabled another one i like to do is to get rid of all the uh, bloatware and you can use uh, this software here it's called uh, sharp 10 and you can use whatever one you want there's tons of them out there i've done loads of reviews on these sort of programs uh, just download whatever one you want you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i'm personally going to do it because i don't want uh, that stuff running on the system that i don't use and uh, what i'll do is i'll go ahead and just uh, disable a lot of these now there is a built-in function here up in actions which will do a safe recommendation uh, which is all the uh, data collecting telemetry stuff and and things like that now if you're not bothered about it and you want to leave that stuff running and leave it as it is then by all means leave it as it is you don't have to uh, run this but I'm just going to create a restore point first and then I'm going to uh, disable a bunch of these in one go and it will save me having to go to the registry and do a bunch of other stuff inside there and services and stuff this does it all for you which makes it a lot easier now i'm trying to keep this as basic as possible for people that want to do this stuff uh, for their home computers and stuff like that and uh, so i'm trying to keep it uh, sort of basic level but if you want to see more advanced stuff like uh, group policy and stuff like that let me know in the comment section below we can do a much more hands-on uh, approach to setting up your computer and uh, once we've got this done we can go through here and just remove a couple of these manually depending on what you want to uh, turn on and turn off you can see here we've got a bunch of uh, stuff here we can uh, change all the telemetry stuff is turned off and disabled which is good and basically once you've got this set up how you want you can leave that and you can leave it done and it's and it's good to go and it takes seconds now, if you are using um, a geolocation and stuff like that, and you don't want to turn that on, you can leave it as it is now. But if you want to do the geolocation, you can still add that in at a later date as well. 
and you can see here automatic windows updates again that's another touchy to uh, topic for some people some people like to have the latest and greatest updates and some people like to wait and if that is the case then you can disable them and stuff and do it when you want to do it okay um, but I'm just going to leave that as it is right now so let's just do a couple of more settings here disable ads in Windows Explorer and OneDrive and you can see disable OneDrive you can do those ones here there we go and a couple of others uh, but that's it we're pretty much done here uh, with this piece of software so very quick and easy to do just got the old little sliders on the side and there's a much more aggressive approach to this program you can do a full on but I'd advise you to just use the rec recommended and put on a couple of extra ones so I'm going to save these uh, choices and restart windows to make those set in stone so let's move on to the next step here. Now the search is another personal choice whether you like to have the search or use something like everything for a search. It's entirely up to you. Everything is much more powerful and I prefer to use it. And uh, if you want to use uh, the search built-in feature, you can do. You can turn off indexing if you want to, but then the search won't work as efficiently. But it's entirely up to you which way you want to do it. You can hide the search here. You can disable Cortana all that sort of stuff really but I'm just going to hide it just to show you here make it hidden and it disappears and then you can use something like uh, everything to do your searching for you now everything is a lot more thorough and it's also a lot faster and uh, as you can see here but if you want to just show the little spy glass you can do or you can show a big white box it's entirely up to you whatever you want to do I'm just showing you the options there so you can see them okay it's still there now we're going to go to storage here and set this up and this will allow us to set up a called storage sentence allows us to set up uh, some files to be deleted on our system on a regular basis so if you want the temporary internet files deleted and you also want your downloads folder emptied you can set this up here if you want to every 30 days one day whatever you, you can set it up to how you like and uh, that's pretty much it so that's a pretty simple uh, way of having those done and then you can click clean now and it will remove all the data from there now if you do have a lot of files in your download folder that you like to keep in there then obviously I would leave that well alone but if you want to remove those you can click on the clean now and uh, that should take care of that for you in the background so you shouldn't have to uh, worry about that anymore. Now I do know the download folder always gets full up with uh, programs and stuff. People just never delete them. So let's go back into the settings pane here. And uh, we're going to go to account. And uh, I'll advise you to set up a password for your account. You can see there's not one on here. But if you want to set a password up, set a password up. And then you can have a login by uh, face recognition or PIN. That's what I'd recommend you set that uh, login process up on your system and you can see here pin it's grayed out because there's no password on the system here this is just a test machine but basically that's what I would do here and uh, have it as face recognition or a pin for your login process now obviously there's loads more tweaks we can do on a system but that will take hours to uh, cover that video so you can see here removing these tiles and uninstalling stuff from here if you want to do it like that you can do and clear the whole um, panel out and uh, create your own custom panel inside here the way you like it okay and that's another thing you can do to set up your window you can hide this part if you want and just have the uh, the programs popping up on the side there it depends on how you want it set up here so let me just go ahead and uh, move on to uh, the next step uh, which is antivirus now if you've not installed an antivirus and you want to use one then uh, Bitdefender's free antivirus is pretty good and uh, you can also get a, a free firewall from zone alarm uh, I don't like the Windows built-in one this gives me a bit more control and I prefer to have this and it's a bit more secure so once I've got those installed uh, I would move on to the next step which is backing up the system 
Now I use a Cronus True Image 2019 and uh, this also has a ransomware protection and other stuff on here which is very useful but if you want the free option there is free options available for you you can use um, Macrum Reflect uh, which I'll show you uh, right now now Macrum Reflect has been around for a long time and it's a very good free solution for you if you want to use the free versions of backing up your system and uh, this is what I advise you to do so once you get your system exactly tweaked how you like it make a backup of that system and that way if you've got any viruses or anything on your system at a later date you can just put that system back on you won't have to go through this whole process every single time and again you can update that image all the time with the latest updates for your software and drivers now Windows does have a backup process inside built in here as well which you can uh, use uh, if you want to if you don't want to use any software you can use Windows itself you've got a file history and you've also got uh, the good old backup program built into Windows itself it's entirely up to you which way you want to go about it um, so you just uh, use whatever method that suits you but basically at this stage once you've got your system how you like it that's how I would start to the very last process would be to back up the system and get a nice clean image of the operating system with all your settings and features installed and that's pretty much it so now obviously this is a very basic setup um, for the way you should have your system when you first installed Windows there's a bunch of other features you can mess around with here and a load of other little tweaks but they're going to be your own personal touch to your own installation and of course there's much more advanced stuff you can do which is group policy and other bits and pieces that you can do manually and registry tweaks and stuff like that but of course most of this stuff is pretty uh, good enough for most people but there is some other features that you can enable like Hyper-V and stuff like that if you want to get into much more advanced stuff but for basic computing that's pretty much as good as you're going to get and uh, if you want to see more advanced stuff then let me know in the comments section below and we'll do some uh, group policies and registry tweaks and stuff like that anyway i think i'm going to wrap this one up my name is brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for watching guys have a great weekend bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos